Peep Charlie says, I'd like to thank you both for such an excellent show. My question is one both my wife and I have, and it is this. If one were to explain the Trinity to a non-believer, how would one go about it? We know it to be true as practicing Catholics. However, we have trouble articulating an explanation. Thank you both and God bless. Father, could I... Uh, can I go first, and then you can correct, yeah, I'd, correct I'd like my to hear what you say. explanation? Well, when, you, I, when I speak to my, uh, unlikely, but when I speak to my children about the Trinity, I try not to use analogies because these usually, you know, fall apart and could give the wrong idea. So I, I said this once to my son. I, I, I pointed at a statue and I said that is a being, which is zero persons. It looks like a person, right? But it's not a person. It's a being, but is no persons, right? You are a being who is one person, uh, and God is a being who is three persons. Um, what's what's right and wrong with that? No, that's absolutely right. I mean, the problem is that some people think God can't be a being who's three persons, and they don't understand. They like they say, "Well, that that can't be true," um, but of course it can be true. It, or they think well, that sounds implausible because that came up. Human beings must have made that up. That just doesn't sound like the explanation of the world. I mean, one way to do it, you know, there's a famous story. I, I don't know who it was. I think it was Bertrand Russell was giving the talk, and um, you know, the older older woman yeah. just objected and said, "Sir, your explanation of the world can't be right." And he said, "Madam, what do you think is the explanation of the world?" She said, "I think the whole." world is poised on the back of a, of a turtle. And he said, well, what's underneath the turtle? And she said, sir, it's turtles all the way down. And um, I think one way to explain the Trinity is to say what well, we believe, this is something Eleanor Stump once said, uh, it's persons all the way down. What we believe is that the basis of reality is, the, is a communion of persons. So reality, I mean, one thing you can say with a, a person who's metaphysically um, agnostic, who doesn't know, you know, what's up, what's the ultimate meaning of life, is we believe the universe is comes from a source that is personal and is created for the communion of persons. And that in God, primally, there is a communion of persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That communion of persons that's in God, that communion of love, has revealed itself, manifests itself to us. I think that's one way to do it. Um, you know, another thing is to talk about Christ himself being the person of God, of the Son of God, or the Word of God, who's come into our world to reveal the Father. And that there is a distinction between Jesus and the Father, that Jesus is truly God, and the Father is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, and we try to understand how they're one, and then we come up with analogies. And that's not incoherent, um, but it's, it's, it's a mystery that is resolved by the personal encounter with Christ and with the Father. And you have to kind of first initiate the question of whether Jesus is real, is he raised from the dead? Is he personally present in the world today? And if you figure out if Jesus is real, then you'll start to understand the Trinity. That's a kind of practical advice to them to pray. But, I mean, obvious, I think the most, I mean, I, I use the idea there's two analogies that are corrective of one another. This is more technical, but, you know, one is the analogy from the acts of the mind and the will. So the, the, you know, the Father uh, eternally begets his wisdom and word, and he eternally loves in his spirit. And so just as we have knowledge and love, we know that in God, God is not just knowledgeable and loving, but God is Father, wisdom, and, and spiritual love, that there's a triad in God of source or origin and of understanding and of love. So you can kind of use the psychological analogy, so-called psychological analogy. And then the other analogy I think you can just use is the communion of three persons of one nature. We're three, we, if there are three of us, we are three persons in one nature. The Trinity is three persons who are in one nature, but they're also one in being. So their their unity is not political or moral. Their unity is substantial. Mm. And those those two analogies are mutually corrective because you know when you think about the psychological analogy, it's obviously one subject, the Father, who in His thought and in His love is Trinity. Um, and in the other analogy, you have three persons who are one in nature. So you have one being, and then you have three beings who are one in nature, or three persons who are one in nature. Well, the Trinity is kind of both those things simultaneously. It's it's the Father eternally begetting his word and his breathing forth his spirit of love. Each is a distinct person. They're one in nature and being. 
Uh, okay, so the two analogies we find in ourselves between um, the self as spiritual through knowledge and love and the communion of persons, three persons who are one in nature. Those two analogies have their origin in the Trinity, but they're somehow um, both like and unlike the Trinity because the Trinity is you know, three persons who are one in being in nature and our processions of knowledge and love. Thank you for watching this clip. You can click here to watch the full episode. And I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and to our amazing patrons for making all of this possible. Please do us a favor before you go, click that subscribe button and then the bell. And that way YouTube will be forced to let you know every time we put out a new episode.